again, fight fans. I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and I'm joined by a fighter who has had a long road to finally earning an opportunity in the world-famous UFC Octagon. After 13 years and having previously competed in organizations like World Series of Fighting and Fight Nights Global, he will join the UFC roster on September 21st in Mexico City at UFC on ESPN Plus 17. And that man is the well-traveled Tyson Nam. Tyson, congratulations on getting what you worked so long and hard for. And thank you for giving me some time tonight in the lead-up to this no. really important moment in your career and your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Now, when, when the call comes from the UFC that you finally get this opportunity, and at least it wasn't something like it was on a five days notice kind of thing like some people yeah. get. When it comes, were you at a point in your career where you were like, I mean, if, if the UFC doesn't happen, I'm fine. You know, I can go anywhere else. I'm doing fine for myself. Were you at a point like that? Or were you, it was being in the UFC still a huge motivator for you every day when training in your career now? It definitely was a huge motivator. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I've uh, I've knocked out um, Eduardo Dantes in 2012 mm -hmm. due to contract dispute. That didn't happen. Yep. I knock out Ali Bagutinov, the former number one UFC contender, mm -hmm. due to contract dispute that didn't happen. So, the UFC was always a, a huge driving uh, factor for me. But at the same time, I, I wasn't going to hold my breath anymore. Because not only once, but twice now, I've been denied my chance. Mm. But, you know, so when I get that call, it's kind of like just, uh, just this, this huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders that I get to finally... Uh, um, scratch off that uh my, my my biggest goal on top of uh my list or anyone's list in uh in a mixed martial arts career now you said you mentioned i was going to ask that too is it relief is it is is there any also like frustration like damn why did it take so long is there kind of anxiety because okay it's finally here i'm gonna be in the octagon is it all of those things like are you, is there a lot of emotions with this leading up to this fight in a few weeks yeah there, there there's a lot of uh mixed emotions you know love hate you know <laughs> er er everything just because you know I, I i know i'm one of the best in the world i've right. i should have been here for a long time now but uh you know i guess 2019 is when i get to to show the world and everyone in the u.s that i am the best in the world and that i should have been here for a very very long time now and like I mentioned, you've been in the sport for 13 years, since 2006 from what I read. Were there ever any other close calls from the UFC over, you know, a very long career? Were there ever times that maybe, you know, they had reached out and it, it didn't happen? Maybe your management reached out, it was negotiations, early stages, but it didn't happen. Anything like that before this? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm in 2012, I knocked out the, the former number one Bellator uh, champion. At the time, he was a current Bellator bantamweight champion, I'm Eduardo Dantes. He was running through guys. He was like on a seven, eight fight mm -hmm. winning streak, just knocking people out. And um, you know, I, I knocked his ass out in the first round up in Rio de Janeiro, his own his hometown, <laughs> which actually uh, I was not. I was supposed to have been on top of the tournament for Bellator, but they kind of cut it away. So I was kind of like, okay, I'm free and clear. But then I guess Eduardo Dantes wanted to stay active, mm -hmm. so that's why we fought in Chuto, Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, I was supposed to be in his sacrificial lamb, but. Um, Kind of threw a monkey wrench up in there, and the of course the UFC wanted to pick me up right away, but due to contract dispute and uh, that asshole Bjorn Rebney kind of put a stop to everything. I was supposed mm. to have uh, I was supposed to have fought um, I believe I was supposed to have fought Uriah Faber when it was like Christmas Eve or something like that, that sort. Yeah, but that didn't go through. But uh, yeah, and again in 2017, I mean. You knock out a former number one UFC contender that yeah. Mighty Mouse didn't even finish. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that the UFC wants you, but due to contract disputes, Fight Nights Global, they wouldn't allow me to, to mm. fight outside of their contract because, you know, kind of kind of knocked out and uh, humiliated their, uh, their country's hero. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, so two times now, two times. I guess uh, three times a charm for me. Yeah. Well, let me... Let me like clear it up for people because you're, you're you're saying contract dispute. So you're saying that both for for the first time we mentioned Bellator and Bjorn Rebney. So that means that you were co contracted to Bellator, even though you didn't fight that fight with Dantes in Bellator. You were still like contracted to Bellator, and then also for the Fight Nights Global, you were both times still like fighters for those organizations, and they wouldn't let you fight outside. You have well, more fights, so you're for, dealing with them or something. Well, for Bellator, they said that they had matching rights. Even though, mm. you know, I signed to fight in the tournament, 
they went back on top of their word and they cut the entire tournament. So, of course, to me and and any any person with any common sense, okay, I don't fight for um, I I, I no longer uh, belong to that promotion. Right. I haven't even fought for them, and they cut it out. So, so but somehow because I knock out their champion, they bring out all these uh, matching mm-hmm. matching rights, and then that's when um. Uh, Bellator, the World Series of Fighting, and um, the UFC was, uh, you know, whoever bid the highest won my contract, which was the World Series of Fighting at that point. Fight Nights Global, I uh, that was my first of uh, four fights under contract, four fights or two years. Mm-hmm. And since um, I was supposed to have been a sacrificial lamb again, that was the uh, Ali Bagutino's uh, first fight after being released from the UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, supposed to have been uh, his first win. But uh, two times now, I throw monkey wrenches all up in their promotion. <laughs> Fuck them all. <laughs> now, you mentioned finance. And finance is, is a promotion that's doing big things and, and, you know, in Russia, but also international. But, you know, a lot of fans in the West maybe don't know them, but they know organizations like you mentioned, Bellator, you were, you know, contracted when, in the Bjorn Rebney era. There's PFL, and, and fans are now starting to get one championship. In the last few years, because you've been on a very good run the last few years, have you, were you at all contacted by them? Forget UFC. Did Bellator with Scott Coker running it, or one championship, or PFL in these last two seasons? They never, did they ever reach out to you, and you had any interest from them? I, I may have had um, a couple of messages from different people, but there was, there was three letters on my mind. UFC. UFC. Yeah, that, that, was, that was all that was on top of my mind. Um, nothing else in any other promotion would have uh, satisfied this uh, thirst and this hunger that, mm-hmm. that, that I've had for such a long time now. And I mean- so it's just such a... Yeah, and I mentioned like the one of the best things about this for you is that the the fight was announced in the last few weeks, so you have about a month of time to prepare for this fight. Now you see in a lot of situations with a lot of new fighters, you even got LFA champions that they get like five days notice, six days notice, yeah. like really short notice fights. You're getting a really tough opponent, and Sergio Pettis. Is there some relief for you? Like shit, thank God I didn't get like five days notice. I at least got a, a lot of time prepare for this, not just Pettis, but this important moment for me. I'm always ready. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> two days, two hours, I'll punch a motherfucker in the face. Okay? <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, you know, I am very grateful that, you know, I've had a, a little bit, a couple more weeks than, than most to, to get ready. Yeah. But um, I have uh, been uh, very active here in Hawaii as of recent, ever since I got off the Fight Nights Global. And, you know, the the promotions out over here with uh, X1, I mean, they, they, they've been putting... Um, They've been putting uh, high-level guys, pushing them into the UFC uh, for for many a years now, and you know I'm I'm added I'm added to the roster from X1 up into the UFC. Mm-hmm. You know we got a lot of great talent here in Hawaii. You know we're a small little rock with a bunch of people that love to mm-hmm. fight, love to fight. We eat shit and fight <laughs> and do it all over again the next day. You know we love this shit. I'm glad you brought that up because I've actually talked to. to the- a decent a bit of, of Hawaiian fires in the last few months. I, you know, I, or the last year, I talked to Ray Cooper. I talked to, to you know, Angela Lee. I've mm-hmm. talked to Lee Malay McFarlane. You know, and the island is really coming up. Like, Hawaiian MA really is coming up. And, like, what does it mean to you to be a part of this movement? Because it's legit. You got Yancey Medeiros. You got Max Holloway. You got a ton of fires from Hawaii doing great. Mm-hmm. But, like, talk to me about the importance of that for you. And also, where are you training at? What's your camp? Are you working with any notable fighters that fans may know and appreciate and respect? Like, what's your your training situation right now? You know, it, it means so much to me. Mm-hmm. You know, to you know, for for a while, like I said, I I, I know I'm one of the best in the world, mm-hmm. and I just needed to be noted that you know I'm fighting in the Super Bowl of MMA, which would be the UFC, to yep. get added to that uh to added to that roster. So I mean, it means so much to me to to know that in my weight class and in in my era right now that I'm I'm one of the best in the world, mm-hmm. especially you know. Here in Hawaii and in the world, yep. worldwide. Um, but uh, you know, I train out over here, out at uh, Hawaii Elite. Um, we got we got a bunch of guys that have gone to UFC. Russell Don, Louis Smoka used to train. I okay. fly uh, Ricky Simone from from, uh, oh, from nice. Vancouver, Washington, to come over here to, to to be my punching bag, slap around and smile <laughs> it a little bit. <laughs> but you know, we 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 got so many high level guys, and you know, even like our amateurs and our, our and our guys um with, with a couple of professional fights there they're they're on the rise mm-hmm. you know like i said this, this is all we do this is all we do we, we we punch each other in the face on a daily basis mm-hmm. and we get better we help out each other and um you know i 
I, I don't know what it is, but maybe it's something in the water, it's something in the <laughs> air. But 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 man, we we, we just love uh, we just love physical contact. Mm. We love competition, which uh, drives us to to be better. Where um you know Hawaii is a warrior, is a warrior class um uh, uh group group of people mm-hmm. dating way back when, mm. and I mean it still it still lives today. Today, where 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 your modern uh, gladiators mm-hmm. out over here on this little rock? <laughs> After a one fight run for Sergio Pettis, who you're gonna fight in a few weeks at bantamweight, things didn't go well from lost to Rob Fines going back to flyweight and to, to face you. Like, what do you think going to this fight? What makes him a difficult test? Because he he's uh, was very good at flyweight, one of the better fighters for the last few years, near contendership, maybe title contender. What makes him a difficult test for you, and makes him just a difficult test for anyone at the weight class? And, and what's been his success at flyweight? What may, makes him unique? Um, you know, he's number five in the world, which mm-hmm. means he's one of the best. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> whether whether it be uh. uh his uh his kickboxing his boxing I mean I'm pretty sure he trains pretty consistently every day um, but you know I've 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 seen it all uh, for 13 years I've I've fought against some of the best like I said I fought Ali Bagutino which mm-hmm. is the number the former number one UFC contender there's not gonna be a lot that he's gonna throw at me that I'm gonna be like ooh, ooh wow <laughs> yeah you know I've 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 stood there right there in the fire for. For many years now, so you're not gonna uh, shell shock me with any anything. So, but I mean, you know, he's he's very good. Mm-hmm. He's very uh, skillful, and um, that's what I love. I I I, I love competition. Mm-hmm. I I love a a one on one, man to man, hand to hand, combative uh, combative sport, which is what makes it so great. You ain't got no other person. Yep. Um, to uh, to blame but yourself if you win or lose. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, you know you have a lot of people helping you out in, <laughs> yeah, in of many of the aspects of the game. Yeah. But at the same time, only you can do bad, and which is what drives me even even more because I, I never want to do bad. I I would uh I would be pissed if I made a fool out of myself on national television. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we'll try and uh, we'll try try and always make it exciting. Now on the flip side, what are you gonna bring to him? You know that he maybe hasn't seen in his 22 fights of, um, of his career. What unique attributes are you going to bring? In? What looks are you going to possibly show him that's going to make it a real long night for him on the 21st? When I when I touch people, mm. they get hurt. Mm. When I make contact with people, they go to sleep. Mm-hmm. At the flyweight division, I put people to sleep. There's not a lot of flyweights that got like a one yep. strike knockout power. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he better. Put his hands high. He better squeeze onto <laughs> something because it's coming hard and it's coming fast. <laughs> What's fascinating yeah. about like the flyweights right now is there was a time, maybe a year or two ago, that a lot of us were thinking maybe flyweights in the UFC are a are, are done thing. It's not happening anymore. You got flyweights leaving, the, the, getting released. I mean, Pettis was a perfect example. He moved up in weight because the idea was flyweight was over. But it seems like it's starting to come back. You got a lot of guys making a name for themselves. A lot of guys, you know, new f- kind of faces coming up in this division where you really can move up really fast with a big win like this and it's the division that's dying for new stars is that part of like an extra excitement going to this fight because not only a one try to get a ufc win and getting and you're being in the ufc but if you beat pettis you're right and you're probably in the top 10 already just that quickly i'm number five i'm number ah. five i knock his ass out <laughs> yeah he's number five i knock him out I, I i keep what i kill i keep what i kill so but i mean i mean yeah i mean I don't know. Only the guys in the back know what's going on with the whole flyweight division. I mean, uh, a lot of talks of Henry Cejudo um, saving the flyweight division. But, you know, maybe they just needed to re- revamp it or something of that sort because it was fairly new. And they see all these um, uh, world-class fighters from overseas, say like Russia. or what, I mean, they're, they're, they're very good over there in Russia. I, I know firsthand because I fought over there. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, just all, all these other countries, they get they they have a lot of they have a lot of talent, and um, you know, especially in the, the the lower weight classes, which people will look over because you know they see they see very technical skills, they move fast, they they put a lot of output, but they don't see like that one strike knockout power like a like like a, a heavyweight right. would do, which I bring to the table. So I will single handedly bring this excitement. Don't look at your phone. Don't grab a beer. Just keep your <laughs> eyes open every single time that I'm right there because I'm I'm right there from putting someone to sleep mm-hmm. at this at this flyweight division. 
Now, what's interesting about your your situation, and more people will, will come to know it as you know the fight gets closer. You talk to more people like me. You know, you haven't been to the UFC, so in. We all know in MMA, what we expect respect about the fighters is it's an unforgiving business, and fighters are not getting paid enough. You know, and everybody thinks you got to go to UFC or maybe one of the other major companies for a long time to make a good amount of money. Now, what has been like your situation in your 13 years? You've been in some of these notable uh, promotions, but maybe not something like the UFC yet. Have you you have, you've seen situations where fighters have to have a full time job, or have you have you had something like that, or maybe early on you 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 know you you know knew how to manage your money and you made investments early on you own a business like has this you know fighting outside the ufc been fine for you you know you've made a, a comfortable life for yourself and it sends a message it's not the ufc only to live a comfortable life as an mma fighter you know i come from the old school of thought that i to, I, I never ask for um money from people you know i know a lot of uh, a lot of fighters that want sponsors to help pay for their training so they can just specifically uh only train all day every day yeah right i get bored with myself i gotta have a job i gotta have some sort of like stress re stress relief time away from fighting and exercise i, I gotta do different things mm -hmm. ever since i started i always had a job mm. and i will still continue to have a job even though i fight in the ufc just because you know if it ain't broke you don't fix it <laughs> so i'm gonna keep on i'm gonna keep on doing the same exact thing that i've been doing and you know the the, the result pays for itself you know with uh with a good uh with a good head on your shoulders, a good uh, routine, and a, uh, a healthy diet. I mean, you can you can do anything up in this uh, in this career and this sport. I mean, you just gotta you just gotta find what works for you. And I, I I think after 13 years, I found what works for me. And what's the the job, the stress releaser for you that gets you away from fighting? I, I actually work for a UFC gym out here in Hawaii. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, pretty, so then, you know, people, I'm guessing the private uh, teachings and stuff like that are going to go up real quick once this UFC run begins. You know, there uh, there might be a, a line, but they're still, they still got to wait in that line because I only can take on so many people. I'm one man with two hands, and I can, I can only do so much because, you know, like I said, at the same time, uh, I, I train full time. Mm -hmm. I still work full time. Right. So I can't be working double time and be able to still <laughs> train full time. You know, there's only so much on top of your plate. And, you know, after these after these 13 years of in the business, I, I, I know when I've uh, when I pushed myself too far, mm -hmm. I had too much on top of my plate. So, like I said, I found I found uh, I found just what works for me, just how much to work, just how much to train. You know, I guess that comes along with the territory, you know. You train, you live smarter, don't do it harder. If they, if things go well and, and, you know, two years from now you want, you know, maybe a champion in the division or contending for the championship and you're making enough money, would you still want to work? I mean, would you, you know, you don't think you'd be pulled to just being a fighter, training and that's it? Would you still need some kind of outside passion, be at work or maybe something else? I wouldn't change one thing. Mm. I wouldn't change one thing. I, I you know, even... Even when I started, because, you know, I mean, I, I got my bachelor's degree in kinesiology, exercise science. Okay. And even when I graduated, I was fighting, but I still wanted to pursue uh, helping people with fitness, their lives, you know, whether they wanted to get healthier or maybe learn some uh, mixed martial arts. So, you know, it's it, it's still a passion. It still it still feels really good for me when I when I help people better their lives, because, you know, I'm not only I'm not only counting numbers for them, you know, I'm <laughs> you, you, you you get healthier and you change your life as a as a whole. So just knowing that you know I'm able to change people's lives, it, it still it, it makes me feel really good inside. Now, what are the fascinating parts? of this fight in Mexico City. Mexico City's at altitude. You know, we've seen really, really talented oh, people, yeah, with really good gas oh, tanks I. struggle with Mexico City. Have you done anything in camp different than the usual to prepare for this crazy altitude that you're gonna have to fight in soon? I'm pretty sure there's nothing I can do here in Hawaii <laughs> that will prepare me for that elevation. I'm here at sea level, but you know, you know, uh, when, when I got the call, I was training for like a five round fight. Mm -hmm. But still, at the same time, you know, at high altitude, I'm pretty sure, you know, no one will ever really be prepared for that unless you're living there. Yeah. Right. So all I can do is uh, train my train, train the hardest that I can and um, cross my fingers and just hope and pray that uh, that I'll be able to give a give a full 15. Mm. 
so, minutes. So I always like to end the, these interviews asking the subject something you know that fans may not know, and then they'd be surprised and intrigued about them. That's a personal passion because we know you're fighting. You also have have a job training as well. So there's a lot of fighting and and martial arts consume your life. But what are some things you really like to do that has nothing to do with fighting, nothing to do with martial arts? Are you a Netflix binger? Are you a movie fan? Are you big into music? Maybe you like to cook. Maybe you do origami, video games. What does Tyson <laughs> Nam like to do when he's not doing fighting stuff? I love watching 80s and 90s movies. Yes! Favorite 80s yes. movie. Tell me what is your favorite. Jean-Claude Van Damme, okay. Bloodsport, Kickboxer, yes. Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I love all of that shit. I love it all. What Rocky, if, the Rocky series. Oh, my God. What about the comedies? I'm a, I'm a weird science, you know. Uh, uh, comedies. I love the comedies. Uh, not so much like the Breakfast Club, but maybe just a shy after that. Uh-huh. But you know, when, when when I flip on the station, because I'm not a big Netflix guy, mm-hmm. I'm not a big TV series guy. I'll I'll try and flip through like you know like FX or TNT, yeah. HBO, and see if they got those uh those old school movies on. <laughs> big Trouble in Little China. That was my yes! favorite movie when I was growing up. Yes. Yeah, I love that stuff. You know, I. I I, I wouldn't trade anything for that. I'd rather watch that than a new 2018, mm. 2019 film. Now, everybody, That's my shit. Bloodsport is, is a shit. And I, I highly recommend, if you don't have it on Blu-ray yet, get it. It's, it's awesome. It feels like it's brand new. Now, everybody <laughs> loves Frank Dukes. Frank Dukes, you know, John Claude's fact character is, your, is the, always a, a popular. But who is your character, other favorite character other than Frank Dukes in that movie? Frank Dudes has got to be Tong Po from Kickboxer. Oh, Tong nice. Po, the bad guy. Yeah. The bad guy. But. Uh, I like but the yeah. monkey guy. The monkey guy has always been my favorite one. You like the monkey guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was too small for it to be realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he went against <laughs> he the sumo guy. Small. It was just too much trouble for him. Yeah. Size does matter, but yeah, I mean, you know. Frank Dukes. Uh, just a- a- every Jean Claude Van Damme movie out there. I mean, it was it was my personal favorite. You know, in in Hell, have you seen In Hell? No, I have not. Yeah, you need to go watch that one. That's from Jean-Claude back in the day Van- too. Jean Claude Van Damme in Hell, prison scene, beating oh. everybody's asses. What about Cyborg? Do you know Cy- Cyborg? I know all about it. Wow, I know all about that's it. what I'm talking about.